In this video, I'll show you how to set up some basic branching dialogue in your Godot 4 game. Let's get into it. I'm starting here with a basic 2D RPG style project. It just has a very basic character controller on the player. I can move in four directions and that's about it. If you want to follow along, then this project is available on GitHub from the link in the description. Feel free to pause here and go grab a copy. Okay, now that you either have that project ready, or are just imagining it, let's continue. We can install Dialog Manager a couple of different ways. I'm going to install it from the Asset Lib. So click the Asset Lib tab, search for Dialog, click it, click Download. Once it's downloaded, you can install it. Now that you have it, you can enable it in Plugins. Now we get this dialog tab at the top here. Sometimes the version on the asset lib lags behind, so you can see we have an update available. Let's install that. Now reload the project. Now we're up to date. From here, we can start our first dialog. Let's make a folder called dialog. So dialog is arranged into blocks, starting with the title line and then dialog, and then ending with an end. So let's make a really simple one to start with. We can test this dialog from here. This opens a special test scene that will start from the nearest title, which is start. Okay, now let's get this into the game. Starting simple again, let's just make the dialogue start when we press the spacebar. We can add some code to the player input handler to listen for UE accept. So the character script is on Coco here. So we have the unhandled input function here that handles her controls. Let's add it in there. So when UE accept is pressed, we can use the example balloon provided by the dialog manager to show the dialog file we just made starting from start. Let's have a look at that. So if I press spacebar, it just runs that dialog. Press spacebar again, and it ends. Okay, that works, but it would make more sense to only show this dialog if Coco is actually standing in front of Nathan. To do that, we can set up what I call actionables. Make a new scene based on area 2D. Call it actionable, and save it. You can ignore the node configuration warning because we'll provide a collision shape later on. The important part is to put this on its own collision layer. Let's name some layers. Layer 5 can be action bolts. There we go. So now let's define a script with some exports. So we need one export to attach the dialog file and another to specify which title we're starting from. And lastly, we need a function that will show the balloon when this actionable gets actioned. Now that we have that, we can go back to our world scene and attach an actionable to Nathan. So this is where we can add a collision shape. Doesn't matter too much what the shape is as long as it's big enough to easily hit it. So with our actionable selected, we can find our dialog file and drag it into the resource slot and start with start by default, which is what we want. So that's all we need to do there. Okay, so we're half done with that. Now we need to add something to Coco so that the game knows when she is close to an actionable. So inside Coco, we need another area 2D that can detect actionables, but it also needs to rotate depending on which direction Coco is facing. To do that, we add a marker 2D called direction, and we can put an area 2D as a child of that, which needs a collision shape.
how it sits a little bit ahead and our direction moves up a little bit so that it's a bit closer to the center of where Coco's base is. Okay, this area 2D we'll call Actionable Finder because that's what it's for. And now we make sure its layer is nothing and its mask is actionables because the layer is the physics layer it's on and the mask is the one it's looking for for interactions. Okay, now we need to change each animation so that the rotation is set. Okay, now that we have that, we can modify the player controller so that when we press UE accept, it will see if there is an actionable close to Coco. First, we need to make a reference to our actionable finder. And next, we replace our input here with something that looks for overlapping areas on that uh, actionable finder, and it actions the first one. So in theory, only actionables will be counted as overlapping because of the physics layers that we specified. So we can turn on visible collision shapes so we can actually see that happening when we run. So let's have a look. So if I press spacebar here, nothing happens. If I move up to Nathan, press spacebar, now we get dialog. Now that we have that working, let's add some non-linear dialog. Let's modify our dialog file so that Nathan wants an apple. If you're wondering where this state apple status variable comes from, the answer is an autoload that I'll set up now. So I'll make a new script, just call it state. And here we specify apple status as a string and nothing by default. So save that and set it up as an autoload called state, add. So Dalek Manager uses autoloads to access game state. And now that we have one, we can refer to it by its name. It is possible to shortcut this process in settings here, so we can set state as a shortcut. Once we do that, we can get rid of the state at the start of all the references. And now it's just Apple status. And let's just give that a try. So there we go. So the Apple status is empty by default, so it fails that check, fails that check, comes in here. So we don't have any way of updating that Apple status yet, so let's do that now. Back in our world scene, it's an apple tree just here. Let's add an actionable to it. With a collision shape. Here we drag our dialog over again. This time we'll start from pick apple. So we need to define this in our dialog now. So at the bottom, go pick apple. And now that Coco has said she's going to take one, we can set apple status to be has. You can see that'll match up here and we'll have the option of giving the apple to Nathan. Let's see what that does. Have an apple. So we have an option here, we can give it to Nathan, which then set it to gave. So now when we talk to Nathan, he remembers that we gave him an apple. One more thing I'll cover in this video is doing some simple customizing of the dialog balloon. The font is too small, so let's make it just a little bit bigger. Dialog Manager provides a tool script to clone the example balloon, so let's use that. It asks you where you want to save it, so let's just put it in dialog folder. Now we have this balloon here. Don't worry too much about how this looks, everything gets positioned at runtime. But for now, we'll resize the character label, the dialog label, and the response template to be a bit bigger. 
So 26 might be good. I might also set a minimum size on the margin container. By default, the dialog balloon auto size is based on its content, but for this, I think I might set it to be a minimum size. In order to use our new balloon, we need to modify our actionable script. Because as you can see, we're using the built-in example balloon, which points to the one internal to the add-ons folder. So first up, we can import our balloon. Then we replace this bit here with our balloon, adding it to the tree, and then starting our dialog. Okay, let's see what this looks like. And that should be more than enough to get you started with dialogue in your Godot 4 game. And that's it for this video. So if you did download a copy of this project and want to jump to the finished version, then have a look at the finished branch. So until next time, if you have any more questions, drop a comment below or jump in my Discord and I'll see you there. I'll see you here again soon. Bye.